In this video, I'm going to show you how to add audio to a Flame game using the Flame audio package. And we'll do both background audio as well as audio that happens on specific interactions. And then I'll also show you how to mute the audio. So we're going to start by installing this Flame audio package here. And we can just do that in the terminal. While that's running, we can add our audio files. So under assets, we already have an images folder. We want to add a new folder called audio, and then we can drop in audio files. I already have a few downloaded here, so I'm going to drop all these in, which are going to be actually all the audio files I end up using in this game. I'm not going to cover every single one today, but they're just mp3 files, every single one of them. And all the audio that I'll be using in this app, I get from Upbeat and I do have an affiliate link down below if you wanted to support the channel and also use Upbeat. There is a lot of free content that they have here, but their paid version is pretty affordable and gets you a lot of good audio. But you can use any audio that you like. But there's one last step we need to do if we go into pubspec.yaml here. Under our assets here, we are including the images, but we do need to include the audio folder as well. And then just go ahead and save that. And this folder name does need to be audio for the Flame audio to work correctly. So make sure you are naming it audio. The name of your actual audio files can be whatever you like. Now let's go ahead and start playing a background sound when the game begins. This game here is our game screen and the game screen is already a consumer stateful widget. All of this has been covered in past videos, so you can check out the playlist if you want to see how this is set up. But we do have this game here, and we're just going to basically be passing that flame game in. So right here in this init state, we can start playing the music. We're going to first make sure that our flame audio background manager is initialized. So we can use the flame audio, and then we're going to be calling BGM, which is the background manager and then we're going to just call initialize. After that, we're going to again use this Flame Audio Background Manager, and then we're going to play a song, and the song will play. We can just pass in based on any of the audio files we have here. So for this, we're going to be using background game or bg game dot mp3, and I'm going to modify the volume here to set it to be a little bit lower than the default. So I'll set it to basically 20% of the default. And that should be it. So at our simplest level, if we refresh this and hit start game. So it's looking like it's missing the plugin. And I believe this would happen if we don't have the iOS version of this plugin working. So what we could do real quick is do a flutter clean. And then we'll do a Flutter Pub get. And then we can CD into the iOS folder and then we'll run pod install. And actually now that I do this, I'm thinking the real reason is probably just that this was already running and I need to simply restart it. But doing all of that that I just showed you should basically reinstall all the new packages for the iOS device. All right, and that loaded back up. So when we hit start game here, this time we are getting a different error and I believe this one is because of a typo. So it's saying that our audio file does not exist. It's an MP3 file. So that is the reason for that. If we restart this again and hit start game, you can hear we are getting the audio coming through. Now this audio is going to continue playing regardless of the game over state. So if we want this audio to stop, we need to actually stop it. So on our game in screen, and let's see if we can just turn that volume off. So on our end callback, we could actually turn the flame audio off using the same flame audio BGM, and then we can call stop. So if we save this now, and we do want to turn our volume back up on the device, if we start the game, when it ends now, the audio will stop. You might want to play a different song when you get to this game over screen. And if you want to do that, instead of stopping it here, you can just play a completely different song for the background. So I do have a BG end, 
So I'm going to use that instead. And now if we were to rerun and play this, we get this sound starting and then the game ends and we have kind of a sadder end state game sound. And then we could do our main menu, set this to be no music or some other sound. Right now, I'm just going to leave it that the music stops when the game isn't playing. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to play music, not from a background, but from an action. So if I go to our spin wheel, which we set up in the last video, and I'm actually just going to default go to this with the routes because it will be a little bit easier. Instead of having our initial location be the menu, we're just going to set this to the end recycle. And here's our spin wheel here, and you can see it would be cool if this had a nice sound effect while it was spinning. So if we go to our spin wheel, I'm just going to find the on fling, and this is just what is happening when we fling this. So within this action here, this is very similar to an on pressed for a button or really any other action that is performed, you can add a call to Flame Audio within here. So right within here, actually I'll do this initially. So I'll do this first. And we're just gonna call Flame Audio dot play. And then we're simply gonna give it a file, which I do have a spinning file called spin, and that is an MP3. So now if we save this and we spin this, you can hear, we get that spin audio played, and then it's over. This one with a direct play, you don't need to worry about stopping it because it's just going to play the whole sound, and then it will be done. So these sounds are much shorter. You can see that's a five second sound. Those are the two main ones you'll use with Flame Audio are the background manager and then just general play. The last thing I want to show you here is how to actually allow the user to mute all sound. So basically having a mute button that is going to cancel out all the sound regardless of the volume settings on the device. So to do this, we'll create a new button widget and we already have a widgets folder. So within here, we're going to add a new file and we'll call this the mute button. And I'm going to just drop in the code for this and then I will explain it. Here is the code which is not fully set up because there is another thing we need to do but it's a simple button that takes a current song parameter, and this is optional. If you pass in a song to it from the state being mute to not mute, then it will start playing that song. And this would be useful if on this page here we wanted to play music, we could unmute and then just play whatever song we pass in. Or if we use the mute button on a different page, we can pass in a different song for that background song. And now we're gonna have this variable here called play sound. And this is going to be watching a provider which we have not set up through Riverpod. And this is gonna hold the state of whether or not the user has muted their sound. And we're gonna be using this provider, but we're also gonna be using Hive to locally store this. Now, Hive is one option to do this, which I've talked about and have been using for this app. You can also do this with other methods such as a database or if you are using shared preferences or some other local data store. So let's actually go ahead and create this provider and then we'll continue talking through the rest of this code. I'm gonna create this provider where I have my other Hive provider, which is in the local data, although you could create this in its own file. So with this, we're gonna be using the RiverPod annotation, but this one we don't wanna keep alive like our Hive repository. So instead we'll just use the lowercase RiverPod here. And then what we're going to call this provider is what you already can see is this can play sound provider, but with the generators, we just use the capital can play sound and then we don't need the provider there. And this is going to extend the can play sound. Now this setup, these are actually called notifiers. So this is going to be a RiverPod notifier, but we need to finish this with a build method. So we will have to override the build and not that code there, but we want to override the build. And this is gonna return a true or false value, so a bool. And, and it's going to be pretty simple. The, the build here initially, we can get a value from Hive, 
So we can go into that box, which we actually won't have direct access to because we're outside of the Hive repository. So we can just go to our box definition up here and we can continue to use the game data box, but depending on your setup, you might choose to use a different box instead of the game data box, maybe, maybe like the game settings. And the only difference that that would make is if you're doing the reset game clear, it would hold your game settings without clearing them, but I think it makes sense to clear this and make the music play again if the user resets the game. So within here, we're going to get a value for play sound, which of course by default is not going to exist. So we can set a default value to false. This should work. So if we save this, our generator will run, although we do need to turn on the generator. And we would do that with the dart run build runner with a watch of D and that should generate our new provider for us here. And I do have a typo here. So build is spelt wrong. So make sure that that is spelled correctly. And I actually also have an error up here. So it's underscore dollar sign. And if you run that, then we should get that updated there. Also the default value here, I want to be true. So by default, I want the, the music to play. And then I want to add a function here, which we can call on this provider to toggle the volume on and off. So we'll simply call that toggle. And what we're going to do here is look in Hive to see what that value is. So we're essentially just going to get this exact same value and we'll set that to a variable called can play. Then what we'll do is we'll update our Hive box of the game data and we'll change our play sound value to be the opposite of our play sound value. So it will just be the opposite of what it currently was set to. And then lastly, we're going to update the state of this notifier of this can play sound notifier to equal also the opposite of its current value. So this state thing here might be a little confusing if you're not too familiar with Riverpod, but basically all it's doing is going to set the state of this notifier, which is this can play sound provider from being whatever the default was in the build. So the build might be true, it might be false, and that will basically be setting the state. So the build is going to set that initial state. You can almost think of this as like an init state of a typical Flutter widget. And then anytime we call this function, it's going to change that state, which is going to be the bool or the state of this provider to be the opposite of what it currently was. So if we go back into our mute button, we can now use this provider, which we do need to import, but we can watch it here and we're watching this play sound. And then what we're doing is we just have a button here, which is an icon button. And when that's pressed, we're going to be checking if the play sound, which we actually don't need to reread here, we can just say, if the play sound is true, then we're going to stop the audio and set the play sound to false, which outside of our if else here, we are always going to be setting it to false or basically setting it to the opposite of what it was because we're going to be calling that toggle, which is going to switch it. And do notice here that we have to use the notifier to call toggle, but we don't need to use the notifier just to get the state value of that can play sound provider. This else here would just be if the play sound was false and then we can start playing the song and if a current song was passed in, then what we're going to do is just play that similar to how you saw before using that background manager. One other thing that we might want to add here actually is to go into our game screen and add this initialization again because we don't, we can't guarantee that this is going to be initialized depending on where in the process this is called. But that's it. Now this mute button should be working. All we need to do is add it to the screen somewhere. So let's go to our menu. And on our menu screen, after the reset game button, we'll just add a, another button, which will be this menu button. And we're not really going to worry about styling it too much now. We'll just add it there below. And if we go back to our router now, we can change this back to use our menu as the, the home screen. And Currently, this is what we would expect. The audio is not muted, so we are seeing the icon of not mute. 
If we do click this, now we would expect the stuff to be muted. However, we didn't actually check everywhere if we're muted or not. So the button state is looking good and it looks like we're muted. And if we do refresh this, the state does persist and that is because we are saving it in Hive. However, if we do go play the game, the music is still playing. So there is one last step we need to do here and that is wrap all of our instances of playing this flame audio in a quick check using that provider. So we can do an if statement here and we can do an if ref.watch and then we can use that can play sound provider. And we can say if this equals true, then that means we can play the sound. So we will add these items in here to play the sound. And we currently are only playing right here and also in our wheel. So we'll also add that if statement there. And you would wanna add this to any area of your app where you are playing any music. So we do have one issue here and that is we don't have ref available in our wheel state. And that's because this is a stateful widget and not a consumer stateful widget. So we can quickly change this to a consumer stateful widget, which this will then become a consumer state and we can import Flutter River Pod and this will be a consumer state. And now we should have access to ref. So now if we update this, we are on mute. So if we start the game, we're actually getting an error here, which if you read through this and kind of do a little bit of research, you can dig deeper into this, but this is an error in my setup here. So in a knit state on the game screen, I'm watching this provider. And watching a provider in a knit state, actually, logically, if you think about it, doesn't really make sense because you're only ever gonna perform this stuff once. So you don't really wanna watch anything here. You would really just read it. So if we change this to read, then it should work and we should remove that error. We can go back into the wheel as well. This, since it is an on fling, this is an action. We don't really wanna watch in there either. We can just read again. And another thing is, since this is a provider that returns a true or false value, we don't even need to compare that. We can just call the provider itself. And that kind of simplifies things a little bit, makes it a little cleaner to read. But finally, if we restart this, since we're on mute, if we hit start game, you'll see there is no audio and the audio is actually up. If we go back to the main menu and unmute this and then click start game, you'll see the music is playing. And similarly, if we go back to the main menu and mute this, get our wheel back up since we're on mute right now, we expect no sound, which is good. And if we go back to the main menu and unmute, and then if we just restart this, we'll get back to our wheel and you'll see the sound is actually working. So this hopefully helps you get set up with your flame audio in your game. And if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll do my best to help.